Hey everybody, the Reese Wirrell here, and welcome back to Joe Dever's Lone Wolf. Okay, first off, if you hear anything in the background, like booms or whatever, because it's uh, November the 6th, so people are still letting off fireworks, so yeah. I just, like before I started recording, I heard like a little, like the rockets that go, there you go, <laughs> and then explode. Either way, I don't think I did this. Terror, where you... Well, you are helpless. All oh, right, yeah, I've done that. I think the last thing I did was meditate. So, am I missing? Oh yeah, I am. Shite. I guess I'll meditate again. You watch. This time, I'll get hit. Or I'll get interrupted. I bet. I can just guarantee. Oh, or not. Well, that's very good. Also, been playing or testing PS2 games, so the volume for everything's way down. Right, to the Noxious Chamber. I do, yes. <laughs> the tunnel eventually widens out to a large chamber with a peculiar panelled ceiling. The room also has several interesting carvings within some of the patterns. But you cannot make them out because your vision has started to blur. A terrible scent lingers, something caustic that burns your nose and twists your stomach. Every sense is screaming at, at you that the air in here has turned foul. Poison, you gasp. That makes sense. This could be some kind of toxin, something the Shianti used in the creation of the cubes, or a side effect from doing so. Instinctively, your thoughts go back to the bass relief you discovered near the surface. You could not make out the meaning of some macabre sculptures you saw then, but things are now getting gruesomely clearer. Leandra steps back quickly, pulling a scarf up around her nose and mouth. Her eyes look wary, worried. I remember the tales I've heard about this place. There were all these scary details about necromancers and dark rites. She ties the scarf in place as she continues. I always thought it was just folklore. Coughing, she shudders. I should have paid more attention. You feel the urge to step back where the air is cleaner, but you also notice motion in the adjoining room. After gesturing Leandra to go, you cover your face and take a deep breath, or take as deep a breath as you dare. Through the archway that separates the two chambers, you manage to spot a strange glowing mechanism surrounded by a visible cloud of noxious vapor. There are Giacs tinkering with it, but no matter what they do, they cannot seem to make it stop. You can also make out other silhouettes in the middle of the fog, Dracarim corpses lying on the ground. If this room is dangerous, the far room will surely be lethal. Giacs are highly resistant to poisons and toxins. That explains why they still stand. You're still trying to figure why they are here or what they are trying to do when you hear, hear furious Dracarim voices in the distance. Peremptory orders are being shouted in rage. Egg Negtes, turn it off. As dire as the situation may be, it is clear that in order to get through the next chamber you will need to deactivate the Shianti device. Before you can consider your next move, you realise that you, that you have spent too much time near the poisonous cloud. The gas has affected you much, more, much worse than you thought. A sudden dizziness overcomes you and you start to fall. Flailing, flailing madly with your free hand, you grab a ni at the nearest torch. Your weight pulls a burning branch free and you plummet away. The torch streaks through the air and you clang your weapon against the floor when you land. One of the Dracarim warriors looks in your or looks your direction. In spite of your waning senses, you see him making wide gestures in the distance as he orders the Giax to kill you. The Giax rush to obey as they char and they charge. Eager to take advantage of your weakness, you struggle to rise knowing that if they reach you before you stand, they will kill you before you can fight back. A volley of small crossbow bolts hurl through the air above you, slamming into the Giax and breaking their charge. Though none of them fall, the barrage buys you the time you need to defend yourself. I said I wanted to repair you for saving my life, Leandra shouts. Are you so eager for me to do that now? Rather than reply, you raise your weapon and prepare to fight for your life. The odds are wildly against you because of the insidious poison in the air. You can barely see or breathe while the Giax are unaffected. These savages will offer you no mercy. Defend yourself or die. Great, so I'm probably going to start this mission or this battle being poisoned. Fun. There's another one of the, the, the squealers. What the balls? 
I was about to say, this room doesn't look very poisoned, but then I saw the, the poison gas. Oh, of course. Hell yeah! Oh, bring it. Oh wait. I press. I started to smash the Y button then. Huh, that was easy. Can't actually tell if my arm has changed or not, seeing as I got it fully upgraded. Woo! That worked. I didn't even lose that much health. No. That's the best part. Steel. Silver necklace. How good is it? Two intelligence or one to the crit... Or one percent crit. Hmm. Your body burns for clean air and your pulse pounds, but the last of the Gex has been dispatched. Across the chamber you see the Wrecker and beyond the cloud. They are howling in rage, but they cannot cross the room... They cannot cross the room, they are in reach to you. Oh. Oh, they are in to reach you. Hmm. Much as you want to turn back, your mission demands you to go through that same room. Somehow you have to enter that chamber, disable the device, and then defeat the Wrecker Rim that will surely attack you the moment you deal with the poison. You just have no idea how to do it. As soon as the adrenaline of the fight fades, you start feeling sick again. All of a sudden, you feel Leandra grab your arm and pull you back to safety. Though you know you cannot retreat, you understand what she is doing as soon as you reach the hallway and fresh air fills your lungs. Leandra looks worried, if not angry. What were you trying to accomplish? She points up at a grid of angled holes in the ceiling. That ventilation, si that ventilation system is drawing the poisonous fumes up and out. She waves her arms all around. If there was not, if that was not here, even this area would be lethal. As it is, this room is still unsafe. You can just stand there and wait for the poison to kill you. No matter what, we have to deal with that device. You tell her once you can speak again. I will go back to deactivate it and deactivate it. You have to trust me. She seems unable to decide, but finally she lets you go. I won't be able to help you again, she says, looking at you intently. Just be careful. You nod and get back to your feet, concentrating on the challenge ahead. You know... You know that once you are inside, you will only have a few moments to pick a strategy. Make a choice. Oh god. Make a mistake. And that may ever be- and that may well be the last choice you ever get to make. Oh Christ. Of course, it won't be difficult. Sixth sense! Duh! You trust your sixth sense as you enter the noxious chamber. Of course. Closing your eyes, you let your mind guide you. Psychic energy reaches out, examining the chamber in ways that your normal senses cannot. There is a small passage, practically invisible, to the right of the entrance to the chamber with the device. You will have to get quite close to the Dracarim and through the toxic cloud, but you may be able to reach it and avoid the poison altogether. It is a risk, but it is one you have to take. You are surrounded by poison gas, but your gamble pays off. You manage to reach the narrow path and escape the fumes before they take you down. The tunnel is utterly dark, but the air is clean and seems completely safe to breathe. Gathering yourself for a moment, you clear your head and start, start into the shadowy passage beyond. Yeah! I think I only lost a little bit of health. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Hmm. It's definitely very dangerous to meditate here. I won't then. Carreta's hideout. Sure. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, um, by the time you reach the end of the dark hall, you can tell you are being followed. You cannot see behind you, your other senses tell you that it's not a Drakkar or a Giak behind you. The footsteps are too quiet and the scent is human, with no trace of dark iron to it. You saw, how I went, 
You saw where I went and t you took my lead. You asked quietly, knowing who will answer. Leandra's voice is a welcome one. Of course I did. There's, there was no way I was going to wait for you to come back. She moves closer now that you know it is her back there. Together you went to a small room. It is lo it's looming walls, carved from stone, the colour of deep black shale. You must not be fu there. You must not be too far from the surface here, and the sun must have risen outside. You know because a blade of light makes its way through the cracks in the ceiling, giving you some relief from the darkness. Though you can see nothing until your eyes adjust, there is another scent here. You and Leandra are not alone. Come out, you say, weapon in hand. I know there is someone else here. After a moment, a finger, a figure, shimmers into view, sensing the magic. Even before you can see, even before you see the man wielding it, you move to put yourself between him and Leandra. The wizard raises both hands peacefully, lifting them from the deep sleeve of a tattered robe. Please, he says calmly, fingers spread and holding still. I have no wish to harm you. I was only being careful because great evil walks these halls. You nod, slowly lowering your weapon, but staying between the wizard and Leandra just in case. She don't know who to trust. You must have many questions. I will answer what I can. The man lets his arm come back to his sides, making no sudden movements. Allow me to introduce myself. No need, you say. The man bears a striking resemblance to someone whose face is burned forever into your memories. You are akin to Vonatar. As you speak, you tense, ready for anything. Uh, ready for anything this man might try. Vonatar the traitor. The wizard sighs, looking down in shame. You need no introduction either, last of the Kai Lords. My name is... Oh, Seratar, and yes, to my eternal regret, you are correct. Seratar leans heavily against the wall, his hand retreating back into his sleeves for, for warmth. I am a renegade from the family that has sorely betrayed Somerland and the Kai, but I may be able to redeem myself, lone wolf. He bows his head, placing himself at your mercy. Will you at least speak with me? Hear me out? Sure. I've got an itchy ear, so I'm going to mute for a second. Right. What should I ask? You want to know if the mage has anything to do with the enemy? No. You ask him how he reached the temple, and why he's at the temple. Reluctantly, you accept the mage's offer. Leandra is dubious as well, but a curious look has appeared on her face. As you wish, Seratar, I make no I make you no promise, but I will hear you out. First tell me why are you here? How did you reach this place and stay alive when so many others have tried and failed? Magic, Seratar answers with a soft smile, a faint glint of pride in his tired eyes. The gift of magic has always been strong in my family, and I am no, and I am no exception. That used to be a matter of great honour for us. After my brother turned traitor, however, my strength became a source of suspicion in the Brotherhood. The shame in his voice is tangible. I left to try and find a way to reclaim my good name and restore the reputation of my house. I searched for a long time before discovering this place. Fortunately, while my travels have been exhausting, they were not fruitless. I have discovered a great deal about the crystals here and, through my study, a way to harness their power. Like it or not, Seratar's skills and knowledge may prove critical for the success of your quest. Despite your mi misgivings, you decide to trust him. Speak, Seratar, tell me all you know. Seratar shares his knowledge with you. I know that there I know there is a force of Dracarin nearby and I and you need to get past them. I was scouting the tunnel that brought you here when their Giax accidentally activate the sh there, the Shianti device. I'm like kind of stuttering, but not really. What's more, there are other agents of the Darklands even beyond this chamber. My chamber here is surrounded and it will help us all if you can defeat them. You cannot help but lament your misfortune. You have survived the Noctis Chamber only to find yourself trapped between it and another con contingent of Dracarim. Leandra notices your frustration, as does Seratar. Fortunately, the wizard says calmly, I've discovered a way to use Shian to use Shianti magic to create an amulet, one strong enough to see, see you safely through the Death Fog. It will be empowered much like the cube you carry. Your hand moves to pick to your pack defensively. How did you know about the cube, mage? Seratar folds his hands into his sleeves. Calm yourself, lone wolf. I have been down here for a, I've been down here 